Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explain how to set up Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365, specifically the Community Edition. If you don't know what that is, that's the free version. And uh, what are the limitations on the free version? Well, glad you asked. Great for uh, home users, also great for small companies. If you have less than 10 employees, less than 10 people on your uh, Office 365, then this is the product for you. And why would you back up your data that's stored in the cloud? Well, because Microsoft will have three copies of your data, but they'll all be in the same data center. And let's say something terrible happens like a terrorist attack uh, or a giant fire or hurricane, whatever, they can get wiped out. So there is a possibility that you will lose your data. Also, it's only a matter of time before Microsoft gets hacked and some of the data is deleted or damaged in some way. Now, is that gonna happen today? No. Next year, probably not, but in the next, 25 years, there's going to be a hack and you don't want the only copy of your data out in the cloud. So how do you get it back? Well, you can use Veeam to do that. Let me just show you one thing as a home user that you might want to be aware of. So in this case, this is a new machine I've got. And you can see here when I go into my documents that all of my documents have a little cloud icon. That means they're not actually here. It means that they are uh, out in the cloud and not on this machine. Now, if I double click on any of these uh, to download them, it'll do what we call hydrate them. It will pull them down. So you can see this default.rdp, that file actually exists on this computer. Well, if I just copied all of these files from here to a USB drive, all of these items would be hydrated and I don't want that. I want to keep the files in the cloud that are in the cloud. I just want to take the files from the cloud and put a copy on a USB drive. So I've got some butt coverage. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is just rip off to veeam.com. Let's just go to products and then Veeam Microsoft 365 CE. CE just stands for Community Edition. It's the free version, which has most of the features, certainly enough for home users and small businesses. Okay, now we click download free. And it asks you to enter some information, uh, but you could, if you have an account, and I do, just click login. So there I have logged in. You may just enter that information and then scroll down a bit and you'll see the downloads are here. Select download, definitely read that agreement, accept. And this will come down very quickly because it's only 256 megabytes. And let's open the file. Now this is an ISO. If you're not familiar with that, it's just a DVD image. And in Windows 10 and 11, you can just double click on them and they'll open up like a zip file. Let's click yes on that. And to close all of this junk, we don't need it anymore. Install. Do we want consoles? But look, just do the first thing. Veeam backup for Microsoft 365. Click accept. It's checking the machine to make sure it's capable. And as you can see here, uh, these are the minimum requirements, but these are not actual minimum requirements. These are suggested requirements. So 16 gig of RAM, eight, eight cores, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but look, uh, it doesn't meet the minimum, but uh, yeah, it might be a little slow. It's fine. Let's just click next. I actually want to move the install to a different drive. You probably don't. Or an extra E just to be special. Next. And finish. All right, so now let's launch Veeam. Uh, most people have a shortcut on the desktop, but I turned the shortcuts off, so I'll show you how to get to it this way. So just type in Veeam, Veeam Backup. There we go. Click on that. Yes. And this, if you're not aware, 127.0.0.1 is you. That's this computer. So click Connect, and you'll connect to yourself. It's an unlicensed product for up to 10 people. Would you like to, uh, to install license now? No, nope, I would not. So now we have to set up the infrastructure. So a pretty straightforward. Click on Backup Infrastructure and simply right click and select add backup repository. And we're going to call this Ian's USB disk next. And do I want to back up object storage or back up to local disk? We want to back up to local disk. A little further on in the video, we'll show you how to back up to Azure blob storage or AWS Jeep storage. But for now, we'll just back up to a local disk. We're going to back this up to my USB drive. And I'm going to back it up to a new folder called Veeam properly spelled backup. Clever name, huh? And okay. And next. And do I want a snapshot based retention or item level retention? Let me explain what this is about. It's not very hard. 
um, but it does scare some people. So the default retention policy is three years. And what that says is keep anything for three years. What is anything? Is anything a specific email or is it the mailbox? Well, if it's the mailbox, if it's all of the mail for this person, then you want to keep it through the snapshot based retention. If you're worried about individual emails, you only want three years worth of emails, well then that's item level retention. Most people will want snapshot based retention. Uh, and if you click advanced, you can see when the retention policy is applied. So you may only want this applied once a month. So uh, most people will leave it at every day, but you, you can change it. Okay, let's click finish and it creates the repository. So if I go to my USB drive, Veeam backup folder, I can see there's a couple of things there. Nice, just configurations. Now I have to go back to organization and let's do a backup. Right click on organizations, select add organization. And what type of organization is this? Is it Microsoft 365? Is it hybrid? Is it on-premise? Well, it's 365. And what do we want to back up? Well, I want to protect Microsoft Exchange. I want to protect my OneDrive. Oh, and of course, Teams, any Teams data I might have, and SharePoint Online. Now, if you're a typical home user, you don't have either of these two, but it won't cost anything, so leave them uh, selected. Click Next. Region. What region are you in? And if you click down, you'll see that default Germany, China, US government. Yeah, you're in default, almost certainly. Germany and China have some specific regulations, but for everybody else, you're going to be in default. What type of authentication method do you want to use? That's just how it signs in and proves that it has authority to copy these uh, the data down. Leave it at modern authentication for almost everybody. How would you like to connect it to the Microsoft 365 organization? What this is saying is there needs to be something at the Microsoft end that your desktop is talking to. It's not just going out to the cloud and grabbing the files. There's, there's a collector at the far end, if you will. So if we had already set this up before, we could use an existing one, but I'm going to select register a new one because that's what almost everybody on this video is going to want to do. Next. And you can call us anything you want. So I will call it Ian's. This needs to have a certificate. If you're not familiar with certificates, don't worry about it. It's a way to encrypt the data. And basically it's a private key and a public key and blah, blah, blah. What you need to do is just install one. And they're free because you can do a self-signed one. So if you're a big company, you probably want one from a uh, provider like GoDaddy or DigiCert or someone else. But for almost everybody watching this video, you're just going to want to leave it on create a new self-signed certificate. Click next. And what would you like to call that certificate? Well, let's call it the Veeam software, blah, blah, who cares? You can call it anything you want. doesn't make any difference. Click finish. There, it's created a lovely string of text for you that you don't have to understand. And now just click next. And it's going to try to sign us in. So click copy code if you, if you see this, and you will. Uh, and then click on device login. And it's going to say, okay, let's prove your you. Enter that code. So this is Microsoft saying, hey, something's trying to connect. Is that you? And yeah, I, you can prove it to you by putting in that code. Is this the person? Yeah, that's the person. And are you trying to use the Azure CLI, command line interface? Yes, we are. And you think, well, I'm not doing anything command line. No, you aren't directly, but this is in the background. So let's click next because it's now says we're authenticated and happy. And let's get rid of this because we don't need the background here. And it configures. This will take a minute. We'll be back. And now just click finish. And now it's connected. Before you actually start the backup, there is something you're going to want to do, which is to turn off the throttling that Microsoft has. So what you need to do is go to portal.office.com, sign in. I already signed in automatically. Uh, click on admin. And obviously you need to be an admin to do this. And you select need help, which will show up over here. There it is, help and support. And here you type in EWS, and you see that the first hit is increase EWS throttling. And you think, what the heck is that? What Microsoft is doing is try not to have people overload their system. So for at least the first backup, you want to turn off throttling. And the way you do that is to gain type in that EWS, click on increase throttling, and then click run tests. And you can see that my Exchange Web Services are not throttled, and that's because I've already been through this a few days ago. But if this wasn't turned on, you'd have an option of, I think, 30, 60, and 90 days. 
you probably want to set it to 90 days. So 90 days, just set it wide open. Yeah, so you can download things very quickly. All right, let's get back to Veeam. And you can see it's got this Matthews from Air thing. What's that about? It's just the Azure tenant test name that I use. You might think, I don't have Azure. Yep, you do. If you have a Microsoft 365 account, you have an Azure account. Uh, you probably just don't know it. And now what we need to do is create a backup job. So easy enough, just right click and say, add to backup job. We're gonna call this Ian's first big backup. Description doesn't make any difference. We'll leave it blank for now. So you can see I can select what users I wanna back up or individual groups or individual uh, teams and sites, but let's just pick users for fun. And you can see it populates it's gone out to the cloud and it's found my users. But I don't want to do that. I want to back up everything. So let's click Next. Select Objects to Exclude. These are things you don't want. So say I didn't want to include this account. Well, I could select that. I don't want to though, I want to include everything. Let's also select, I don't want to include specific teams. But I don't want to do that. So you get the idea. Let's click Next. And to what repository? Well, I would like to send it off to my USB disk, that's the one that I set up earlier with you. The scheduling is run the job automatically at 3 p.m. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I retry three times if it's something's failed and wait 10 minutes between, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, create and I can right click on this and I can select start. And it's going. And I can expand this window so I can see a little better. And you can see it's finding all of the objects, all of the email, it's got everything. Okay, now we'll be back in a few minutes when this is done. Okay, so we're back, we've got the job finished. Let's take a look at a few interesting things. I can go into the history here and I can see how long things took. I can see what was backed up. Now let's try to restore something, and then we'll show you how uh, you can store things in the cloud if you want, rather than just on your desktop or on your USB drive like we've got, because that's a little advanced. So let's just go to a restore. Now in the interim, we've actually taken some additional backups, so you will see more options than just from a single backup. So let's go back to Matthews from Air, right-click on the backup job, and select Explore the latest uh, exchange, explore latest SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams. Hmm, let's go to OneDrive first. There we go. And let's get rid of this computer beta, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to right click on that and delete it. So it's gone. Now I could go into my OneDrive and get it out of the recycle bin, but say it was a month or two later and it's already emptied. How do I get it back? Well, I can right click on the backup job. Uh, explore OneDrive, I can get the latest version, or I can go back a little bit further. So let's go back a little bit further, just so you can see it. Use latest available? No, I want to use a point in time. Let's see what was on my desktop on uh, Wednesday. And this is kind of cool. Show items that have been deleted by users, show all versions. I'm just going to click browse. I'm not going to go into that yet. Click on that, it'll launch Veeam Explorer. This is now pulling data off of my USB drive. Uh, this is for me personally. Computer is in beta ring dot doc. There we go, that's wonderful. And I'm just going to right click on it. Now I could choose save document and I could save files as, that's what you're practically going to do. But just for fun, let's do restore document. Over right here. And well, there we go. How are we gonna do this? Is we're gonna connect with modern authentication? Yep, yeah, that's correct. And we're getting the device login again. So I've got to copy that code and click the link and enter the code and click restore. And in a couple of moments, that file is going to be restored to my OneDrive, which will then sync to my desktop. There it is. Look at that. The compute, the file was just restored. You can see it has a cloud on it. It's still just out in the cloud. It's not even on my computer yet. But uh, if I double click on it, it will be. So pretty slick. Now let's show you how to restore mail. Uh, same same process, right click. Well, let's say it's we want it from today at five o'clock. That's let's say there's something deleted since then. So let's go into that. By the way, I don't know what I'm gonna get here. So let's go into Ian again. And let's go into my inbox. 
and I'll just wait here for a second and you'll see it says enumerating inbox. Oh, I've only got 24,000 items in it. That's going to take a second, but it will populate. We'll be right back. All right, so there's my inbox. So I could restore this email by simply right clicking on it and selecting restore to. I could also send it to myself. Uh, but the easier way for a lot of people is just save to desktop or save to MSG file and then it'll, it'll ask you where to put it. And an MSG file, if you don't know already, is just a Microsoft Outlook file. So that's one way to go. The problem with this is there's a lot of content here. I mean, I've got 24,000 items. And so if I'm trying to find something that's even the slightest bit obscure or where I'm not really sure where it is, I got to filter it. I got to find, I got to search. So click on the advanced search at the top or advanced find at the top. And these are what you can search for. So I'm going to search for address fields and I will search for things that are from, uh, that contain, and let's use uh, Clive. He's a great guy. And uh, let's, uh, but that's still a lot. Uh, Clive sent me a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna filter down to even uh, tighter time. So I'm gonna go from, I just want things that were received between, let's go with uh, January 3rd and add to list. That's my filter, click start. And you'll see at the bottom right here, it comes up with an insanely high number, usually days. Yeah, there we go. Don't worry, it'll go a lot faster. But you can see email is already coming through. It's already finding stuff. So this will take, oh, in my case, this takes three or four minutes to go through. This will keep chipping away. But say this is the one I wanted. I could just right click on it, save to MSG file, and I could save it on my desktop. There it is. Pretty cool, huh? So now you know how to restore things. I'm going to stop this. I don't need to finish it. Let's show you how to, uh, instead of saving things to your uh, USB stick, let's show you that you can set up repositories elsewhere. So say Amazon Web Services or Azure, which is my favorite place. Now go to Object Storage Repositories, right click, Add Object Storage. I'm gonna call this Ian's Azure Next. And what do I want? Amazon S3 compatible, S3, Azure Blob. Let's go with Azure Blob. Let's click Next. And what kind of storage do you want? Blob storage or archive storage? So archive storage is the least expensive. You cannot work on archive storage. It's offline. And you might think then, why would I ever want to store something to it? Well, because Microsoft will bring it online for you. So, and this is dramatically less expensive than blob storage. And by the way, blob storage isn't very expensive at all. But uh, if you needed to do restore, it might take two or three hours. So for the sake of uh, argument here, I'm just gonna leave it as blob storage. Click next. And so you get the idea of how to set this up. Let's click cancel here. I'll right click, add object storage. I'll type in some garbage here. Next, let's do Amazon. I want to shove it off to Amazon. Uh, let's use, uh, well, this is the same sort of argument here with archive storage. Let's use S3. And again, it's asking for account information. I'm going to stop there because I don't have it right now. So that's it, boys and girls. If you found this useful, please give us the big thumbs up. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Subscribe's also appreciated. If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can do so at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.